Hi, welcome to Kiko. Um, today we're going to talk about ceramic coatings. Now this is a question that comes up numerous times. So how do we work on ceramic coatings? What do we do? How do we reapply? Is it good enough? Are we going to... There's a thousand and one questions. What we have here today, we have this, this golf here. It's got a couple of small dents on the rear arch. Um, one's on the body line. This car belongs to G-Technic. Uh, who are one of, if not the leading provider of uh, ceramic coatings uh, worldwide. This vehicle is coated in their newest products, which is the Crystal Serum Ultra, uh, which has been topped up over the top with XO version 5. A really, really slippery surface we've got on this. This is all about making the surface tension so nothing can cling to it. Now, obviously, if no dirt, water and everything else can cling to it, what hope has our glue got? What I'm going to do today is just show you what would happen if we was to go, just go and do a standard glue pour on this versus what we can do to overcome any ceramic coatings we may come across. I'm going to use one of the smallest dead center tabs and I'm going to cut this this on the so we're at our perfect pulling temperature now rather than using a tool i'm just going to use my fingers and that happens we have zero adhesion the hydrophobic properties of the coating are stopping our glue from adhering to the surface how do we combat this we get a hold of one of these this is our six e's process waterpaint.com and you can source it there check here so we're going to go through i've, I've checked all this we have a steel substrate to work with I have my inspection lamp. I've set my glue gun to 195 degrees Celsius. I've checked my panel temperature. I'm gonna lift my panel temperature to 50 degrees in a second. I've select my tab. For the lifter, I'm going to use mini lifter with my crease feet on. Why do I use this? We have a very, very small piece of surface area. What this is gonna do, this is gonna help hold down the metal surrounding the tab. So when I pull it, I'm gonna concentrate the pull. Now we're gonna use clean. Now, if you notice on clean, use a cutting compound either by hand or machine. This is gonna get rid of our contaminants. It's also gonna get rid of the uh, the XOV5, which is cur currently uh, stopping us from getting that adhesion. The ceramic coating is gonna take a little bit more but the ceramic coating is designed to fill in the gaps on the top of the surface. So if you imagine a fairly unstable surface, there's lots of little peaks and troughs, etc. When the ceramic coating goes on, it's actually designed to iron those out. As long as I get rid of the XO, the top coating, the ceramic coating doesn't actually give us too much in the way of problem. You will need to speak to your customer because uh, whatever coating they have had applied would need to be reapplied because obviously we're going to compound a section like this which means that section is now going to be bare and, and open to the elements. Then we're going to go through, we're going to use our isopropyl alcohol, get rid of any clays, lubricants, anything like that that may be in our compounds. And then we're going to go through our coating surface. Let's repeat that process again, and hopefully we'll get a better result this time. After that pull, we now have quite a nice little high spot so we've got rid of most of our dent on there so a little bit of knocking down to do what I'm going to do is I'm going to match my tip to the size of the high spot now this is quite a small high spot so I'm going to go with the smaller of our fire tips now I'm going to choose my tap down now two hammers here the heavy bit heavier body hammer a lighter blending hammer if anyone's going to use this obviously these pucks are great great for striking the top here if you're on something lighter so some thinner metal vehicles, maybe considering putting the puck on the lighter hammer will be a good thing for you to do. What I always, this is a personal preference, but what I always do to keep the balance of the hammer nice, I take the heavier tip off the front. Now everything's loaded towards the front of the, the knockdown. So I'm a lot more comfortable, a lot more controlled because having that extra weight at the back there, it just brings the balance down the back end of the hammer. So it just becomes a little bit e a little bit harder to work with. I now want to, because I'm looking down a high spot, I want to have my eyes parallel with my, my light, my sighting aid. And I'm going to go in there now and just gently knock down where possible. I want to maintain that distance. The closer we get, the more chance you have of sending that um, high spot into a low, which we don't do. By keeping distance, we're gonna keep that nice and flush. So now we've completed our hard body line dent. Quite a harsh and severe body line, coated vehicle, running the six C's process, and we've got the results. If I'd have just carried on with the, just sticking the glue on and not doing my process, I'll still be here next week trying to get this to stick. It just won't stick. But just below it, we have a tiny, 
tiny little dent. So that dent's probably about five to six mil. Because of the, uh, the size of the contact patch, we need to make sure our 6 E's process is absolutely on point. I'm going to use the ice version. This is a polycarbonate tab. The reason I'm going to use a polycarbonate tab, these are going to pour about 25 to 30% harder on mild steel. They do dissipate heat quickly. You have to make sure you are absolutely perpendicular. We're using a pass-through adapter. We need to make sure our tab is sat perfectly on this ledge and not like this. If it's like this, this is one of the main contributing facts of these breaking. So they're pulled off center and the heads will snap off. A lot of people say we're gonna go with the mini lifter. I'm actually not, I'm gonna go with the small slide hammer. This is a very light slide hammer. It's just got enough weight in there to get these moving without overpowering them. But it gives us that little shock, which on a, a dent like this is what we're going to need. I, I keep hearing at these tabs and we go right down to a little five mil here, that uh, they, you know, they don't work or we're having problems with them. Most of the problems that you're going to experience with these tabs is that there is, you've pulled the main part of the dent. You see a little dent in the top, but it's actually in the top of a high spot. So what we need to do is start tapping around to bring that high spot down low so it's level. So these tabs will only work on panels when they're dead flat. Perfect for this. Size my tab up first of all. I'm gonna go for this, not quite small enough for the smallest one. I just wanna make sure that I can see the secondary damage around the outside of this tab. So this is the one I'm gonna go for. I'm going to flash the tab over as well. The reason we flash the tab over is to warm that tab up, but also if there's any residue of the release agent around the tab, it's going to make sure we get rid of that. Now this is going to set off real quick. I don't want to force the glue out because obviously there's not a lot of glue in there. Panel's going to dissipate heat quickly. Our tab's going to dissipate heat quickly, so you can expect this to cool down quite, quite fast. We're currently at 39. 37 cc was dropping down quite quickly there on our, on our temperatures. There we go, we're right now. So little shock on this is all we're gonna do. So that's it. See, so had a fairly good sound there. We had a, a good deal of um, pull on there. The glue has remained on our coated vehicle. So it means we've done what we needed to do to get this to, to bond on quite nicely. You can actually see it's not often that happens, but we have the perfect hole. So quite a result there, no knocking down needed. Obviously if we were going to knock down, we'd run through our same process, selecting our knockdown, um, selecting the right material, the size of the tip, and then the hammer itself. These little tabs do work and they do work incredibly well, but like everything, it's using it in the right way at the right time. Choosing a smaller mini slide hammer is the perfect tool for this.